Hey, it's Mike with All My Mind Entertainment, and today we're going to check out The Two Towers, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, Pitch Meeting by Ryan George and Screen Rant. So let's check it out, get right into it, and we'll talk about it afterwards. So, you have a second Lord of the Rings movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Very exciting. So what happens in this thing? Well, Gandalf is back. Yeah, he fell off a thing, right? He sure did, sir. Right? But you're gonna come to realize that falling from great heights isn't really fatal for good guys in these movies. Oh, well, great. Yeah, so he falls and he falls and he falls and he fights that fire demon and then they end up at the top of a tower and they fight some more. How'd they get to the top of a tower? Unclear, but then he's gonna finally <laughs> kill the fire demon thing and then he's gonna die, but then he's gonna come back. Oh, yeah, he is? Yeah, his spirit went somewhere for so long that he forgot his own name, but now he's back and he's all white. Well, that is how death works, so no further questions. He's all white. No, this is like magic and stuff. That's not that's not how death works. Sure it is. So what else happens? <laughs> okay, well, there's gonna be some more walking. Oh, there is, huh? Yeah, a whole bunch more walking. A ton of it, in fact. Even the trees are gonna walk in this thing. I love it. So anyway, Merry and Pippin, they've been captured by orcs, right? And they're being brought to Saruman. Right. And some of the orcs actually want to eat them. They're like, yeah, why can't we have some meat? <laughs> what, do the orcs all have cockney accents? Accents? They do, yeah. Oh, inexplicable accents are toys. And then the orcs are attacked by these dudes, the Riders toit. of Rohan, and it's just a massacre. <laughs> oh boy. And for a little bit, we're gonna think that Merry and Pippin are dead, but then it turns out they're not. Oh, fantastic. So they head into the forest, and they meet these big talking trees called the Ents, and these things, they talk super slowly. <laughs> oh, well, I guess that's a good way to pad the runtime a little bit. How long is this thing anyway? About four hours. Oh my god. So the Ents, they're gonna have this big council meeting, and they're gonna decide that they don't want to go to war. Oh. But then they're gonna see that Saruman destroyed a bunch of trees, so they're gonna go attack Isengard. Okay, so the trees were treated poorly and now they want their revenge? That's perfect, I love it. Who is that? Oh, that's just M. Night Shyamalan. Sometimes he eavesdrops on these meetings and tries to get movie ideas. That's not a good idea for a movie, <laughs> M. Night. Yes, it is. Okay, well, that's gonna be bad. Yeah, he shouldn't write that. <laughs> so what does Saruman do when they attack? Does he do some kind of crazy <laughs> wizard counter move? No, he just kind of frantically looks around like he lost a contact lens or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, so we're also gonna follow Sam and Frodo on their quest to destroy the ring. And how's that going? Well, they keep getting lost, so they team up with this weird creature called Gollum, and he's like obsessed with the ring because he used to own it. Oh, and this guy's freaking nuts. I mean, at a certain point of the movie, he's just having a full-on conversation <laughs> with himself. He's just talking to himself and replying as if he was two different people. Yeah, he's freaking nuts. <laughs> oh, this guy's got problems. <laughs> <laughs> so he guides them to where they need to go. He does, but when they get there, there are a bunch of soldiers <laughs> and crap, and one of them comes really, really close to them. Oh my God, it's gonna be tough to survive that. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, they hide under this blanket thing, which looks exactly like a rock, so it works out. How does it look exactly like a rock? Well, technically, it's an elven cloak, so... And what's that made of? Plot armor. Oh, okay. And eventually, they're gonna get captured by Boromir's brother, Faramir, and he and his men are a little sketchy about the ring. That freaking ring makes everybody sketchy. It sure does, sir, and eventually, a Nazgul sure is gonna show up on this flying fell beast monster. Oh, no. And the ring is gonna compel for Frodo to go see the Nazgul and be like, hey, check out this ring. Pretty cool, huh? That's a horrible <laughs> impulse to have. But then luckily Faramir's gonna shoot an arrow at the fell beast, and so the Nazgul's gonna be like, wow, okay, never mind. It leaves. <laughs> yeah, it leaves. It flies away. But all of Middle-earth is hinging upon that one ring. The Nazgul's just gonna back off. Well, he didn't realize they had arrows. And doesn't it seem <laughs> that Sauron knows exactly where the ring is now? Shouldn't he send all his forces towards Frodo? Well, to be honest, sir, this part wasn't in the books, but I thought it'd be cool, so I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back <laughs> about the story implications. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. Thank you. So what else happens? Well, Aragorn and Legolas and Gimli, they're still running around trying to find Merry and Pippin. Oh, yeah. And they meet this King Theoden, but he's all messed up looking. Oh, how come? Well, he's being, like, controlled by Saruman with the help of this sketchy advisor dude, mm -hmm. Wormtongue. Never a good idea to hire somebody with worm in their name. Or tongue, for that matter. Anyway, <laughs> Gandalf manages to use his staff to do a kind of magic exorcism thing, and he saves the king. And so they kill Wormtongue? They don't, know, because they're like, well, enough blood has been shed. So they lock him up in a cell? Nah, they let him go. Feels kind of dangerous. I mean, he'll probably <laughs> run directly to his boss and give him more information. That's exactly what he does. I bet he did. Anyway, later there's a battle, right? And Aragorn, he falls off a cliff. Oh no, is he dead? Well, we're gonna think he's dead for a little bit, but heights don't affect him because he's a good guy. Right, okay, yeah. Oh, and he's also gonna have this flirty thing going on with this woman, Eowyn. And what sparks that flame? Well, they look at each other, so... You know, they're kind of in love now. Very romantic. <laughs> and later in the movie, there's gonna be this you know. massive battle at this place called Helm's Deep. Wow, 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 wow. Ow. <laughs> yeah, are you okay, sir? I think I maybe got a little too excited there. Oh. Should I, should I call an ambulance or what's up? No, no, no. I actually feel fine now. Oh, I think you may have died. Oh, uh, yeah. Look at that. Whoops. Whoopsie. Well, welcome back, you know, producer guy the white. Producer guy. Yeah. 
That's what they used to call me. Anyway, there's going to be a battle. Oh boy, and how does that go? Well, there are only a couple What's of hundred good wig? guys and like 10,000 orcs, oh so, God. you know, not great. Yeah, those aren't good numbers at all. But then some elves show up, and they're led by none other than Haldir. I, hey, I don't know who that is. He was in the first movie for, you know, a couple of minutes, remember? Uh, I mean, kind of, maybe? <laughs> it was a long script. Anyway, he's going to get this super emotional death scene, and people are going to be like, no, Haldir! All right, I mean, you know, rest in peace, elf dude, I guess. So then the battle keeps going, and it's not looking good. <laughs> uh -oh. But then Gandalf had told them to look to the east at dawn, and sure enough, he's there right on time with a whole big army of backup. So wait, can he predict the future? That's a pretty precise statement to have given. Vaguely, sometimes, when the plot demands it, yeah. Very cool. <laughs> and at a certain point, King Theoden, he's gonna turn to Aragorn and be like, let this be the hour where we draw swords together. Oh, a little art project. Not the best time for it, but still fun. <laughs> no, they're gonna stab orcs with swords. That makes more sense. And then they're gonna win the frickin' battle. <laughs> Fantastic. And Gandalf's gonna be like, the battle for Helm's Deep is over. The battle for Middle Earth is about to begin. Stay tuned for movie three. Well, okay, that whole thing's a little on the nose. Maybe just cut out that last part at least. Okay, I'll cut out the last part. So what do you think? Well, it sounds great, but do you think maybe we're overdoing it with the fake out deaths? It seems like we keep going back to that trick. Well, I don't know, there might be one or two. Ten fake out deaths in the movies. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Lord of the Rings and Two Towers. I'll, 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 I gotta say this. This one, Two Towers, was better to me than Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings pitch meeting. Now, if you haven't seen that one, check it out as soon as you can. Check it out. It's still good, but it just wasn't as funny as this one. I thought this one was really funny. So, uh, I like how he spoke to the trees having issues. The whole M. Night Sh Shyamalan uh, kind of work in there uh, <laughs> with the happening. Um, even just the whole the producer the white uh change up that was hilarious and he used it with his wow 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 shtick uh, <laughs> this was a funny one i like this one i, I like this one and again it's, this is my favorite movie two towers was my favorite of the three they're all great don't get me wrong but two towers is my favorite um so i really enjoyed this one i like just how he how he uses pieces of the movie and speaks to, like what it looks like in real life like you know saruman looking for a, a lost eye contact lens and so <laughs> That's I, I like the way that Ryan George puts all this together and makes it work, and 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 obviously even just the banter between himself and how he compares that to Gollum. I thought he'd go a little deeper into that a little more, but he just sprinkled it in there just just enough where it's like, oh, all right, I see what you did. It was funny. Not that he's like, let's move on to something else. So yeah, this one this one was the better of the two so far. We'll see what he does with Return of the King. That one could upstage all of them. We'll see, but so far, Two Towers is my favorite. So. Uh, check them out. I have the links in uh, in the description for the other pitch meeting reactions that we've done uh, for Screen Rat and Ryan George. Uh, I'll have the links for the original video and also to Ryan George's uh, YouTube page as well. Because he, he does some funny videos as well. So I might even do some reaction videos for any new ones that he does on that. So if you haven't checked him out before, check him out. He's great. Thanks for watching once again. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and like this video for more content. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.